You know, we know that additive manufacturing lets us create structures with internal detail, internal structure that's simply not possible to manufacture any other way. And that gives designers some freedom to create some truly unique applications. I'm with Mark Kirby, he's additive manufacturing business manager for Renishaw Canada. Mark, you're holding what at first glance would be a scale model of an air vehicle. Tell me about it. This is not a wind tunnel model. This is a Mark 0.8 rocket powered drone. There's nothing like this in the world. This is something where 3D printing will actually win every single time. A fuselage like this hollow, thin-walled, uh, couldn't be machined from solid. I couldn't machine it from solid with any of these machines, not cost-effectively, and I couldn't cast it. It would, it would, be, it would freeze off too soon. Uh, features, features like a spring-loaded wing here. This is how the wing is going to pop out. There's a titanium coil spring in here that's been 3D printed as well. Uh, and if I, if I take the, the top off, this, this is just to show the printed top. Uh, the avionics package is going to go in here and the rocket motor at nozzle is at, is at this end here. So this really is a very good example of where 3D printing is, is an enabler to a product that doesn't exist. It's a brand new product. So I think that's the kind of story that 3D printing wants to put forward where it's, it's solving a new problem. It's a new, new to the world product. This is an extraordinary application. Now, this is rocket propelled, solid rocket. Now, solid rockets, of course, are, are mechanically very simple. But the difficulty of solid rockets, of course, is that the entire fuselage is a pressure vessel. Correct. At the same time. And, and that was one of the challenges. How do we get, how do we get the weight out of it so that we make it very thin, but it still has to be a pressure vessel? Uh, and actually it needs to be made in two halves. These halves actually snap together. So one of the very first things that we did with the customer was to develop the snap fit to prove, can you actually print two pieces of titanium very thin and have them snap together and lock? So this was, this was tested. Uh, the first thing was just to see that it worked and then it was pull tested to over 700 pounds, at which point the glue joints of the test equipment failed rather than the joint itself. So I know there's a lot of there's a lot of myth and there's a lot of hype about material properties for 3D printing and the material properties, but this really has demonstrated that it is a very capable process. The wing has been machined from solid, this wing on our five axis machine at our solution center. Um, so the wing is a very high accuracy component. Again, this is one of the, the, the myths of metal printing. Metal printing is not gonna have the same finish accuracy as CNC machining. So for the wing that has to perform at near supersonic speeds, uh, needs to be very high tolerance. The fuselage has to be strong, a pressure vessel, lightweight, but it has a different set of demands. So again, it's about choosing the appropriate process to be cost effective. What problem mission-wise is this solving? Is this a reconnaissance application? Is this potentially a military application? This, this, as I said before, if you, if you plot um, air vehicle space as, as speed versus mass, there's the top left hand corner which is lightweight, very high speed, there's nothing in there right now. So one possible application for this could be uh, to be deployed into a severe weather event like a hurricane, the eye of a hurricane. This could be fired into it with a sensor package to collect data. So that would be one possible application for it. With 3D printing technology, is it possible to imagine, envision a generation of low cost to disposable air vehicles that are, are cost effective enough that you can afford to lob them into the eye of a hurricane and then walk away? Well, obviously from a business perspective, Jim Renishaw would love that to, to happen, that we need thousands of these. But right now, we just need one. We need one or two for testing. The design is already going to change. Uh, that's the beauty, again, of 3D printing, that the investment really is, is, is only in the part I'm holding in my hand. There's a UAV called the Perdix, uh, which flies in small swarms and uses artificial intelligence. So we're already seeing things like that. So I, I really don't know where we'll be seeing this. In fact, of course, we won't see this at Mark 0.8, Jim, will we? But uh, I think this will be uh, coming, coming soon. So it's been very nice to be part of this project. Mark Kirby at Renishaw with a low weight, high speed micro UAV that could only have been made by 3D printing a titanium.